Welcome to another Lumion livestream tutorial, guys. Well, Lumion 8 is out and it is awesome. And as you can see, we have a lot a lot of features I want to go over. So, yeah, Lumion 8 comes with some incredible new features and there's a lot of smaller ones and some bigger ones. And what I want to do in this tutorial it's just give you guys a, a quick little view of each um, each one of these new effects or new features that have come out. Uh, Lumion has done a great job producing little animations showing off what each one of these new features does. Um, that really that probably works for most of the people. Um, what I'd like to do is just be able to give my little two cents in here and kind of my view of as I've played with it, what what I think it could be used for. We can go over it really quickly, so we'll just have a different use case that you'll see it. So hopefully some of these things, I, I remember I learned from Lumion's uh, videos at first and uh, some things read really well, some things are a little more intricate and so hopefully this can give you a little overview. I will go over some of these, I plan on the next couple of weeks focusing on some of these new effects so we can really do a deep dive and have a use case scenario. Things like Skylight, it's a little, a little more in intricate than things like uh, just new, new color correction. But let's, I'm gonna go off and start off showing, this is Lumion 8's What's New page, and this is kind of what we're gonna cover. This is what I based this off of. As like the list you see, we're gonna cover sk Style, Skylight, and this is, a, this is a great example to follow up on some of these, and this even has links to their tutorials here. So I'll throw a link in the description on this to make sure you guys can take a look at this. And yeah, there's a lot of things to cover, so I wanna jump into a project that I've done that happens to be extremely heavy but I've been working with this in Lumion 8 and have been blown away by the results let's start going at some of these um, some of these effects let's uh, let's look at the new the new styles effect and there was it's not really an effect but it's their preset really a big change too that's not noted in the what's new uh, at least on our list is the u user interface has changed let's take a look at this really quick too so now in the photo mode, you know, one thing that's missing, hyperlight's not here anymore. Hyperlight is now an effect. We'll go over that a little bit more. And the batch render button is gone. So now if you want to render photo sets, batch render, you go through here. I only have one loaded right now. If I just did two, you'd see. So now you can render the current shot at these resolutions, just like before. And you have a photo set. So you can pick and choose which one you want, which is really nice. And a nice thing is too, if you have to cancel, you just hit escape and it doesn't have to go through everything again. So that's a change. And if you notice too, that the effects, if we start adding regular effects, has changed as well. That's something they didn't really highlight. I really like it. So now you have each effect is, is highlighted here, but they show up like this. Now, so jumping into the custom styles, I think this is great. There's Lumion keeps adding more and more features, and I guess it could be a little more intimidating to brand new users because they just keep adding more and more things. But there's these great presets here, so you can just click on realistic. And so there's a setting here. There's some basic clouds in here, so they show up as white. So that means like it's the style effect. That's something they've added. So and it's kept my own which is really nice it's the darker ones here so say I had I wanted my shadows to be you know well that's another one to cover but I want my shadows at a certain setting and then I want to add whatever was left it keeps my shadow effect and then all these other ones are white meaning that's the preset so there's a couple different presets in here realistic dawn as you can see here color sketch I mean Lumion's all about been able to get quality out with with speed and act in uh, efficiency now it's just as, as simple as a, as a button click and you have a night scene set up and there's a lot of there's a lot of settings on here and these were set up by like the Lumion staff themselves I always kind of feel that each scene has its own feel and that you'll need to play with a lot of these f per scene but it's a great start and and for a lot of people who don't even there's a lot of Lumion users who I doubt even use very many effects at all this is just a great click button for them. So that is the styles effect. 
what I'd like to talk about right now is another one of my favorite ones. I'm probably jumping the gun here. The new shadows effects. So let's take a look at shadows. So what you're going to see down here is two new switches. Soft shadows and fine detail shadows. And they are both awesome. In, in their own way. They're completely separate and they are both like incredible new additions. They're not just two little switches. They, they make a huge difference. So let's look at soft shadows and it's pretty self-explanatory let's get a let's get the sun and angles so we can see the shadow there we go there's a shadow from the roof right there soft shadows is just a button click there it is really nice soft smooth shadows really if you wanted to really get it right you get kind of more of an overcast kind of day which would cause more diffuse shadows like that but just to click on and off uh, one thing to notice if you turn on the sharp the defined shadows and now it's called ultra sharp you cannot click soft shadows because they're kind of polar opposites the normal has a, a soft ish like it's not as sharp and then you could sharpen it up or for what a really bright sunny day would have and if you want to get real detail in the shadows and then now you can have soft and I'll tell you, it makes a huge difference. And then this one's a little trickier. Fine detail shadows. So there's a couple things you'll notice this in. And uh, I'd say the biggest thing is so far if I've noticed it in vegetation, especially the grass. The, uh, I want to mention as well, both these effects are real time. Something like Skylight we'll talk about actually can't be previewed very well. It has to be rendered out to see it just like hyperlight but this soft shadows I mean I'm running 20 19 frames a second turn shaft soft shadows on almost no effect that's awesome that's that's what I love and fine detail shadows as well I mean it hasn't taxed a thing so we're seeing this they give you a little preview and it'll look better when we render but it gives you an idea of what it's gonna do so let's do in the perfect world, I would have had this pre-rendered, but let's just let's do it in real time with you guys, so I'm not pulling any tricks on you guys. Let's take a shot right here. So I'm gonna just render this current shot, and this one is with regular shadows. Well, actually, it has soft shadows, but we'll just say no fine detail. So you see the grass. That's how it's always looked. That's nothing new. Let's take a look at that. So that's how grass has always looked. And it's great. But it I have noticed, you know, you don't see the shadows in the grass itself. That's fixed now. Turn on this fine detail shadows. And we hit render. And you can see it there let's take a look at it oh yeah and that, that's a that's a new thing too if you haven't noticed a little pop-up screen comes up showing you can click to where it was open it's just a little cleaner than it was so now we're seeing little details in the shadows and the grass let's just compare them side by side I think it's pretty self-evident right here big difference it also appears in the trees we're not seeing it much here but I plan on dive there's so much more to talk about using this um, that's why I'm going to do another video on it so there's a quick preview for there and oh yeah let's there's soft shadows rendered there and it's great because we pretty much see that in in the real-time preview okay so I'll jump into skylight now now this is definitely something that I have really had a hard time understanding at first but I'll tell you this is probably one of the most the shadows and hyperlight are probably one of the greatest new additions for rendering so here's skylight unfortunately skylight is like hyperlight and you can't it doesn't preview very well they don't really give you a preview in in the in the render window here kind of like shadows could give us 
you know, a lot of people might be upset with that, but at the same time, this is something you could turn on or off, and it adds realism to the shadow and light quality that comes in. So I've what's been explained to me is skylight is is like rendering the sun at lots of different air, um lots of different locations to kind of get more fine-tuned realistic shadows. Something that ray trace engines do automatically because they're actually uh, path tracing whereas this is a way to do it a little still quicker for something to add a little de extra detail in our rendering. So we have some toggles sliders and quality in here and this is what I'm gonna tell you right off the bat this is a heavy effect if you set it on high I wish I had metrics I still have to compare what adding each thing does to frames but it it is very costly it's for the utmost detail and realism you want to get in a shot otherwise you know I would stick it on normal or 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 not use it if you're if you're worried about time it's it's heavy but it's definitely working for um for it's working hard to get realism it's working hard for you so you have two sliders brightness which is just going to control let me give you a tiny little preview in here it's just going to control how bright the effect is and saturation is definitely something really important saturation is going to add kind of a, a bluish tint we saw it on here i kind of like their example they show on here for skylight so it doesn't turn everything white like this it's kind of a I thought that was a little tricky way of showing that they've turned everything white in here and you're seeing the effect of the skylight itself and you're seeing the blue light which is which is how the Sun is the Sun actually like gives out blue light in a way and what it's gonna do is it's gonna turn the brightness the saturation controls this you can have it not turn blue at all but it's going to give a bluish tint to all your shadows and it gives them um this is definitely one we're going to go deep dive into in another tutorial and this is just controlling where it shows up planar reflections are the added reflection planes and projected is what's always showing up in that red re um, render um, reflection sphere that we get in the utility and we will cover exactly what all these things do in a more in-depth one but let's take a couple shots so I'm gonna turn it as default at one and one actually let's let's try it yeah we'll do it one each at a time I'll do 1080 so this is one 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 um Let's see, there is another thing I've been told helps with this. You're just seeing a little bit of blue in here. It's not really showing up. I was told as well when you do this that you need to turn the shadow brightness down for the effect to really show up. And I'm gonna this time I'm gonna up the saturation really high. So you're gonna see what that blue that bluish tint does. And I hope that, I promise I'll show this off a lot better when we go in depth, but I wanted to give a preview. There we go. You're seeing the blue in the reflection and wow, the shadow. You're seeing the blue in the shadow there. I have some example images I was going to show. We can turn up the brightness, turn down the saturation entirely, give you a couple shots. It's definitely something you're going to have to play with and kind of get an idea with. It really... I mean, although it's taxing and heavy, it looks incredible in animations as well. So now we're just, the blue is gone because we turned saturation off and we're just getting really soft, fine reflections. This is not a great example to show it off with. I have some example images I wanted to show you guys. When I ask what this does to Lumion themselves, to try to help on so I can explain it, they sent me some of these examples. Right here. Okay. Let's do this right. So this, this is a simple car. In fact, it's one of the new cars. That's Lumion's default shadows on an object. It's just kind of a, it's just tinted gray. There's not really a lot of gradient or detail in there. 
and then when you turn on soft sh um, skylight you can get a little more fine reflection in here detail you can see that it's darker underneath the car and it's turned blue which is kind of more realistic that's how shadows actually look a lot um, and then this is the same skylight effect but with the saturation turned down versus what it was so that that's kind of things it's doing it's doing a lot of other things he showed me this picture too oops that's in uh, Photoshop wants to open well Photoshop's gonna show this one there you go picture shadows in the Sun a lot of times are blue and that's what it's that's been it's mimicking it's just another step of realism and I can't wait to go into it in more in depth we'll have I'll have use case scenarios I'll have example images that really show it off when next time we cover it in general but I just wanted to give a quick little glimpse of what skylight does it's definitely one of the more powerful features that have come out so let's look at some of the other ones really quickly one of the more simple things let's look at new effects we have or adjustments to effects one is the outlines which I really like so it's kind of a cool architectural look you can get sometimes clients don't want a lot of detail or you don't want to show off a lot of detail yet so you can get those lines in there how dense the outlines are it's just a nice addition to the NPR non photorealistic rendering capability Lumion has so a fun one to play with really easy to show off they have also added a couple sliders to the color correction so they called it um as they said it they said better color correction and so now we have like a temperature slider Get, definitely control how cool the shot is how warm the shot is and they have vibrance and I'm all for this I I I'm definitely already in, in the habit of taking my images into Photoshop. That's just kind of how I do it and then fine tune it in there or Premiere After Effects if it's a video. But I'm all for any extra any extra control we have in here and it changes it to limit low high, it's the same thing. It's just clamps the brightness. So now I could you know when you're in a hurry, you can adjust and get your shots the way you want in here a little bit better. So if you don't have to so you don't have to touch it all in Photoshop. That'd be great. There's a couple features I'd love them to add, and I wouldn't have to do it. So that's color correction. And here's another really powerful one I'm going to talk about. And I have it set up in a couple shots here. It's called model variation. Model and material variation. Hmm. They added material in there, too. So here's a good shot. That's eh, showing off the new water, too. We'll cover two at once. There's the new water. Um, if you've been with Lumion long enough, you'll definitely notice the difference in it. If not, it still looks like water. In fact, better water. We'll look at that in depth, but the, what I'm gonna cover here is this new variation control. In fact, I'm gonna turn it off here. I'm getting really slow, because I got reflection planes on here. Okay, so it's under scene and animation. And we do have a couple more things here. We're going to cover them all. Variation control right here. Now I'm going to show you how this works, how you reload a variation. But the effect works like this. Select your object. This is going to be our model house. And what I've done is I've, I, working with this actual client, they had a couple variations where they were determining whether they want this metal panel on these extra parts here and then they experimented with three different versions this is the one they picked with wood here instead and only metal here but on variation two whoa. this is extremely heavy guys I'm telling you yeah. There, it's loading. 
you know what happened was when you load a scene and if you have a heavy object that's turned off in a layer when you load the scene I'm pretty sure that the object that's not turned on yet if it's a heavy object isn't actually really loaded into the scene until you turn it on and I think that's what's happened here so it's like advanced layers okay so there we go so then we have the metal here and I can just toggle back to one in here just like that and let's get a little the third one which is going to show metal in here let's take a look while that's waiting I don't want to have you guys sitting there watching that just load let's see how they show it in here there you go so there's some really cool things you can do with this I, I'm just beginning to grasp the things that we can do with this I'm thinking having done the 4d animation there's some some really simple ways of doing 40s as well with this in fact I'm probably gonna revisit that I have two more methods to show off if they're showing this house with lots of different variations I just had small variations which worked for me with their whole compl completely different models they're showing off here so there we go all metal you can choose between that that or that with a slider just remember you have to select it I got a little frustrated at first because I kept forgetting you have to actually select the object first for the variations to work and let's take a look at how they how you load variations so let's go to imports oops so select your object here and it pops up right here so I have one two and three and then you can add more um, let's have like a car in here we could take a look at that so the car here has one variation and this is how you add it and you want to load hyperlight for videos I have something to show you guys that is pre-done because that's definitely don't, don't want to sit here and wait and render an animation but I can show you really quickly hyperlight that's turned off here and look I'm in an animation and hyperlights in effect I will tell you though the only caveat the developers did was the hyperlight in animation is not as strong I, I, I I think it'd be interesting to compare maybe if I do a deep dive into hyperlight for animations I can exp I can probably say what it's equal to but it's it's not as powerful as the steel shot as in it doesn't you know still shot has 0 to 100 this is probably if I were to guesstimate somewhere around I don't know 50 maybe less out of 100 so it's not as powerful like it the effect isn't as strong as it is in stills it's the same effect though it's just clamped I think they did that for time because it, it does add some time and I'm gonna have metrics when we go over this comparing how long it takes how much time it takes per frame to add hyperlight but there it is slider on there and it works it works really well in fact I do have an example I've, I played with I wanted to show off it's one of my most popular videos and so maybe you guys have seen this one but I redid this one so showing here this is at daytime as it's shot and I'll upload this eventually and that's showing the hyperlight on in an animation you know it adds a little bit in the daytime but wait till the nighttime you'll see a huge difference that's how that is it's how Lumion renders the same scene at night as, as it did without hyperlight always a, one of the most more difficult things to get good lighting in, in interiors and then so I flick it on and then I'll do the slider here on and off and then the slider will show the difference of hyperlight and animations done I mean it's great I kind of wish it were a little bit stronger but I mean that's a huge difference and that's what I want to show you guys um, it did actually that video has another thing to show off too at the end the end this was rendered at 4k which is another new feature I can show off simply this was rendered at 4k and then this is zoomed in 200% and this is equivalent to what 1080 would be and you can go even further so very 
very nice I can show you 4k right here when you go to render so now we have small which I recommend every time before a big animation render out in small really quick just to make sure everything flows nicely you got 720 1080 1440 and now ultra HD 4k it works just as you expect it's really not that fancy it's just more resolution and I'll talk about this in another video why you'd want more resolution even if you're not showing this on a 4k TV oh let's show off water right now because we're here looks a lot different in daytime doesn't it looked all black and reflective and now it's green actually so now when we go to materials they've completely redone the water and it's oh it's really good looking they, they spent a lot of time on it it's, I think it's had a lot more realism Wow, that would be this. Uh, this house isn't. No, I'm not gonna make that joke. <laughs> Hopefully, the water does not ever look like that in real life. That would not be good. Uh, it's actually displacing. Anyways, so same controls, just better looks, better controls. Oops! Don't do that. Now I'm going to show you the cool thing though. If you go to, so now they popped it up here so water shows up here. Yeah, the waterfall the waterfall material could use an update. That would be nice. That'd be a good one to push on. It it does what it does. In fact, I got it going right here. Waterfall material. Yeah. I agree. Now this new water makes the waterfall one look like it needs to be updated a little bit more. Still useful. Um, so you got water. That's where it shows up here. You don't have. They didn't hide it in nature before. Before it used to kind of be closer. But if you go to nature, you're treated to presets. Uh oh. Should have saved my water before because now it's changed. <laughs> but lots of cool new presets for water here. Which I think is great. There's lots of variations to be had with that one material. Let's look at a couple more little features here before I switch. It's just going to take a second to switch out to music. Well, look at that. See that different water? How much that affected? Huh. I'll have to get that effect back because we worked hard to get that. But see, I'm ruining my scenes for you guys, <laughs> sacrificing my work. Just kidding. I can get that back easily. But I like. I've definitely seen a big improvement in the water. I think it's great. And let's look at another new feature. So I'm going to show off the two-point perspective slider this is one of the nice little ones that they've added it's kinda interesting I never thought about doing this but apparently they did and it's kind of a nice nifty little thing said everything is running very slowly let's get rid of all effects here okay so now in the camera effect, see they've reordered this as well, which you know it gets frustrating at first because I'm like I remember exactly where everything was. Camera used to be over here, these used to be like weather used to be next. But so let's look at two point perspective, and this is how it looked before, but now we have a slider. So this is with it off, and then you can kind of slowly turn it on. So if you're just trying to frame the perfect shot, you have more control now. And I'm going to cover tilt shift when I switch scenes. Let's jump into an example scene, which this is kind of cool. They've updated all the example scenes. They've been pretty much the same for a while. The cool thing is, too, the really pretty preview scene, the renders that they did, 
with the Farnsworth house, you get that. You get that exact scene that they worked with. So you can replicate the same results. I like when they do that. So I'm going to jump into to this one. Villa Wegner. Shouldn't take too long to load. But in here we're going to cover... I'll be able to cover the uh, look at fixed point, which is kind of like an orbit effect for the the camera. We can talk about tilt shift. I think I'll probably jump into tilt shift next. So while that's loading, I can show you some images. If you guys don't know what tilt shift is, I didn't know what it was. I'll admit it. Um, I have some cool pictures, some examples. So tilt shift photography, which I, I guess it's pretty intricate, is where they take pictures of real life real scale things but they make it look like it's a model like this is a picture of a city and it kinda looks like a model because of the, what they're doing with the with the uh, focal effect the there's another example only this parts like in focus and everything else is out of focus so it makes it look like these little tiny model little tiny cars I've been able to kinda mimic this with the depth of field it is just a lot harder a lot more limited but now it's its own effect we can create make our stuff like little models so this one I did prepare for and had some cool images images to show off and let's Lumion is now ready it's a good at they redid this it's kind of cool more stuff to play out play off of updated everything so let's look at the tilt shift effect let's create our own I'm doing an animation here. So here's our tilt shift. And so we just get a couple controls here. We control the amount, the intensity of that blur. We can shift it up and down. You see a little band. What's in focus? Rotation. So it's not stuck at horizontal. You can focus whatever angle you need to. And this sharp area size controls the size of that. So I'm not I'm not perfect at doing this yet, or like accurate to what maybe a realistic camera would do. But let's see, let's make it a little smaller. But the idea is now it kind of looks like a model, which I like for a lot of my shots, especially when I mean, combine this with say like styrofoam effect. Looks like a little styrofoam model now. Nice little effect that we can use so it's tilt shift and a fixed point camera so this one's this one's a little was a little hard to wrap my head around at first I mean it works easily but how it's working or how to set up for it so when you if you're gonna turn on the fixed point camera Think of these camera shots you're doing as points in space. Don't it doesn't matter where you're facing. So we'll do one where I'm like going here. This is what you would naturally want to do. And then here. And then here. Instead of focusing on where the camera's facing at, just think of those points in space that the camera's set to. Because that's what it's getting used to orbit with. So this one's kind of cool. Another one they've added into an existing effect, so people can probably miss it. Handheld camera. I don't use it that much actually. So I could have missed this. So there's a switch. Look at fixed point. I want to focus right here. And it's going to orbit around it. Now I'm going to show you now. Let's do it again. But remember, think of it as cameras that are just floating in space. I, I'm going to face over here. You know, go up over here. I'll even face away. Just to show you guys the effect. I wouldn't do this, but... So it's these points in space that it's going to use to orbit around. So when I set this up, now it's facing. It's like the camera's, it's like when a string is like attached to that orbital point, and so it's just going to orbit around that point. So it took me a second to figure out how to, how to do it. It works easily, but think of it that way. 
and we get a nice orbit effect. It's just better control. I've had to do an animation where we wanted to perfectly circle a uh, a building, and it was really hard to get that perfect rotation in Lumion, but now it should be a lot easier. Okay, some great new effects to cover as well here. I've been much anticipated. Ever since they did the new uh, mass move where you can adjust the paths and add those curves to it, I was always thinking like, man, they need to add that to mass placement. And now they have. So now mass placement can add curves. Here, let's use this as an example. That's probably how they place these rocks. Let's say we wanted to put, I don't know, for whatever reason, trees in the middle along that path. Bamboo. So now starts off really wide here and <laughs> looks like there's been some preset objects in it let me get rid of that warehouse <laughs> try this again okay so here's our path same way hold control we can we can round off these points if you're really trying to follow a landscape plan. You get the idea and there they are. They follow those points, they follow the terrain. And you, would, you can also, um, I, I mentioned how wide it started. So you random, randomize offset. So you could turn that into flowers. You know, it works the same as everything else that we've done with mass placement. You can still mix in other objects. So that's going to add a lot more flexibility to our workflow. Very much invited. I kind of wish they had a, a randomized scale on here, though. That's the only thing I kind of wish they've had for a bit. All right. So next one. Going to cover measuring tool so this is a great little addition I mean I've had one time someone asked me to actually measure something from in Lumion and I was like oh but I might be able to do it I used the move tool and it, it wasn't accurate it, it, it didn't give them what they wanted but I guess it's a nice little feature if you want to know how far away this is I have it set to feet it could be switched to meters too usually defaults to meters so there's seven feet and it, it stays too so make sure to delete them if you don't want them so that slab is you know about 17 feet wide nice little thing to have a grid here I have to think when I would use this maybe just for control because you can change the size of the grid I'm pretty sure it doesn't show up in rendering I think it's just to help you in placing things in, in specific controlled uh, spacing. So, nice little things they've added. I'm going to delete them all now. So, let's look at OpenStreetMaps. Got a good addition. I'd Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it worked. Yeah, no problem. So it does work. I just got to make sure that people have added the detail. I think you could check it open street map yourself. So there we go. I didn't happen to grab any of the famous buildings, but they said they've added they, I saw pictures of some of the buildings with some more detail. There's a little bit more detail on some of these, so not just flat tops. So let me show you how you can edit this now. So I've had this happen where I've downloaded a, uh, an open street map area and randomly there's like a tower that's like 300 feet tall that's not there and it shouldn't be that tall. Probably because someone edited it and messed with it. So now say this building is not supposed to be that tall, you can actually select it and now it's hidden. So it's like hide buildings. Yeah. 
It says move. Look at that. So now you can move the entire thing. Maybe I'll do another uh, video on OpenStreetMap. I kind of just want to cover it really quickly and move on to a couple other things, not keep you guys on for too long. This isn't this is a cool one, but I want to make sure to have get through everything else pretty quickly and you could rotate. This is valuable. I've I've definitely had this problem where I've needed to rotate it just slightly to fit my scene. So it's more useful. And I think you can so that's the appearance. So just like before. Change the build minimum height. Random oh look at that. Randomize heights of buildings. I think that's for buildings that aren't particularly assigned heights yet, like these ones. In New York, it looks like they, they spent all the time in it to get precise heights. But if you didn't, you get little basic generic buildings that people haven't added detail to. That's what would randomize here. Okay. So that's pretty good for street maps. So here is another awesome effect that they've added, which is the time warp effect. And all the time warp effect does is it lets us control where in the animation sequence our little animated objects are, in this case this person, who actually walks quite a bit around. And so if you're not careful placing them, he may even walk into, see how much you walked right there? He may even walk into a wall. So right here we just have a full control over where he starts. We can control where he's going in our animation. Like for example, we don't want him walking and standing on air right there. We just have control of placing him where he is. And then you also saw the the bird back there. You can see the bird's animation being controlled right here. And then we also have a whole category for imported custom animations for imported models. So very much welcome effect. It will be used quite a bit to fine tune uh, where these guys go. Very welcome addition. What do we got left? Okay, soft and hard edges. This is another great one. See, I use SketchUp a lot. And what I will do on my higher quality renderings is I, what I try to do is round the edges because it's kind of like a big rule. Like there's the texture has been replaced but I use a round corner and I round the edges on certain materials I feel it's worth it to get that little touch of realism instead of sharp corners it's kind of one of the biggest uh, flaws of photorealistic renderings if you have sharp edges but now I don't have to do that nearly as much because the round corner shows up under weathering does this for me and it's funny because substance painter had something like this that could use a normal map to round the edges let's, see, let's make it like really shiny I think that'll help it. yeah look at that so sharp edges rounded you can go pretty extreme depending on the size of things Just remember nothing has really nothing really has should have sharp edges so this is this is a great addition very welcome it shows up in here it doesn't you don't it doesn't matter what level of weathering you have it hits its own slider okay so next a lot of new materials they've added which is awesome I, I love materials that are already set up in Lumion some people depend entirely on these materials so they've added a lot of polygon the only problem is I found with the polygon materials is that sometimes they're hidden they're hard to find I kinda wish almost there was like a what's new tab here to find them so sometimes they're put in the front sometimes they're put in the back so if we go to like soil here there's a bunch of new soils put on the ground but they're in, to put on the ground but they've been placed in the back Let's find something that we can turn. Well, unfortunately, the ground 
No, that's not going to work. We'll just do it right here. We'll do it on this driveway. As I've done my, I've done previous uh, videos before talking about Polygon. <coughs> Great content, and I'm glad Lumion's getting some on board. I believe they mentioned that they're 4K. I'm not sure. Maybe they did look really good. They come in and they've already set up. Obviously, um, gravel isn't something that would you would worry about a a glossiness map on usually, but unless it's wet but they've done that and I'll show you on some of the other materials so there's, there's they've added it to soil if we jumped over to um, you know, added some fabrics right here look at that stucco So you'll find them, they're kind of hidden at the end. <clears throat> you'll see the polygon. Oh, it says they're 2K. Maybe some are 4K, I'm not sure. Oh, that one says 3K. See, polygon doesn't isn't super consistent themselves. Some objects are like 10K and some are just 3K. So Lumion put in what they could. These tiles are from before, but they're still great. I'm pretty sure all of them. They have, some of these might be newer. There's some new metals. So just look around, <clears throat> look through all the tabs, you'll find some new metals. I think I really liked one of their new, uh, look at that, nice scratched metal. So they did put the uh, glossiness map in here and everything for us. Yeah, these are great. Is anyone the one to show? Yeah, there's some new asphalt that's nice, which actually would make sense here. And more concrete. Just look for, look around for them. You'll see them in there, and they are probably better than some of the stuff that's already in Lumion. They're probably some of the best stuff that Lumion has in there. And lots of new objects. And usually, at first, I was a little disappointed when I opened this. You know, I think I have it still saved, the favorites for all the new trees here. <clears throat> it looks like what Lumion's been doing lately is they've been taking some of their trees that they've had in the past that are really common, but just their model didn't look as good before or it's dated, and they've been redoing them in, in, in better quality. And, you know, their, their trees they do are always really, really awesome. In fact, these... This scene is set up to have some of the new some of the new trees already in it, so you can see it on there. In fact, I guess it's kind of nice to have them all isolated here. So first, I was like, "Well, it's as not as many new trees as I was expecting," and it serves some more new people too. But they've added it, so I start them. So yeah, much more muscular dude. Got people on bikes. It's awesome. There was one floating around in the form that everyone used, and it was a little. It was pretty janky. Someone did it themselves. I'm glad they someone did it. It worked, but up close, you could tell the. It was not really nice. Now we have that. I'm excited. Construction workers. All A X Y Z. So like the some of the best models. Guy walking the dog. We got a dog. What's up? Oops. Yeah, so, oops. Can't click too fast. It, dog shows up. We have a cat and a dog. We're good. So I'm pretty sure, yeah, I covered. That's all of them linked here. And they're, of course, as good quality as ever. But where everything has come in is the interiors. Looks like I was searching for glass before. This, this is, I didn't even mark all of them, but they just got 
a huge load of Evermotion models, which are some of the best models out there for architectural renderings. You got some nice beds. Makes sense to put it on the pool there. Lots of just little things to add in there. And I, it is little things that really make a rendering, especially on the interior, make it look lived in, look, look real. There's purses. And in fact, I'm a big fan of um, there's piles of clothes. They all look really good. There's even hung up clothes. Let's see if this, where they're actually, I'll show them where they're actually located. A lot of them are in decoration. Yeah, it was yeah, hung up clothes, like like on a closet, on a coat hanger. And food, <laughs> they've added a ton of food. Holy cow, lots of desserts. I kind of yeah, that's definitely something I've wanted more. There's more food. Look at all these tabs of new food. Fruits, vegetables, desserts, pizza. Look at that. So you'll be very happy. Yeah. <laughs> very happy to see all of the new additions that they've added for interior detailing. Which is very much welcome because they usually do focus more on the people and the trees. And this time they seem to focus a lot more on those objects. No problem. Glad I'm showing this to you guys. Got someone saying thank you. So Evermotion's great. So, honestly, um, there's only one other thing to show off, I think, that I could think off the top of my head, is now the save system has changed. This could be frustrating, I guess, because it used to be a little more simple. But I'm, I, in the end, you're going to be very grateful for the way they're having you save now. Now they're forcing you to save out an LS file. So this is my test scene. Cat blocks is on. So there it is, a test scene. And you can just click on it. It's just like now SketchUp, Revit, all these other programs, which I think is a good thing. So this is a good way it, it's captured all the Lumion scene information and all the models and all the materials so it's like exporting the scene but they've done something where it seems to save faster I don't know if it's just me so now that it's saved you can either save it as a new file or you just hit overwrite and that's how you save now and you give it the right title here and I've never filled this out but you can and in any closing closing kind of statement on this they've added a lot of, of of really important little updates they keep adjusting the user interface to to better suit us they've listened to what we've what we've said what we've asked for and they're giving us better workflows better uh, smoother cleaner interfaces to work with and I'm, I find it very much very much an improvement over over um, seven and past versions and how the, these things are being organized so you can see here the photo set usually you have to re render one or render all before now it can be like I just need one I just need um, all these except for three and eight and I can hit render render speed seems the same but of course we got new features Altogether, very solid release. I'm very happy with it. Um, I guess if there's anything I can show off, what it's done to my latest, my that project I showed off before, final renderings. So, here's some shots. You can see the detail, fine detail shadows in here. to find a really good one you can see it in the grass grass has gone up a lot in detail the lighting I have soft shadows right there definitely adds the skylight effect is on here as well it's adding a lot 
So I've just been very impressed with what's done. There's a new water, there's a new grass. It's a pretty cool shot. Grass looks real. And so this here's that skylight tint. It's kind of tinted more blue. I really feel like it's added a lot more to the realism. All right, as always, for those watching live still, stay on a little bit. You can ask me a couple questions directly about eights. I will focus entirely on your questions, but this will be re-uploaded and cleaned up, hopefully. And I think what I'm going to do, too, is I'm going to even put, um, because this is so long, I'm going to try putting timestamps so you can jump to, if someone wants to see sky uh, skylight effect, they can just click on that little timestamp and jump right to it instead of having to scam through however like an hour of footage and hope that helps a lot for you guys thanks thanks a lot for watching and until next time <laughs>